Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Tonight, New York's Department of Education is weighing its options about mask mandates in schools. This comes as the CDC recommends universal masking for the start of the school year, regardless of vaccination status. As Big Fox's Matt Kleindens tells us, the Department of Education is telling districts to prepare for restrictions. Good evening and school districts across the state were sent a memo from the Department of Education to prepare them for mask mandates at the beginning of the school year. As part of the latest CDC guidance, masks are now being recommended in schools. The guidance would apply to students and teachers regardless of vaccination status. As a result, New York health officials are working on establishing new guidelines for the upcoming school year. Governor Cuomo says the CDC guidelines would be the basis of the new school mask policy. On Thursday, New York's Department of Education sent a memo to update school districts about the mask policy. In the letter, the department says that all schools will be open for full in-person learning this fall. However, school districts should be prepared to move to remote learning in the event of another COVID health emergency. The Department of Education is recommending the state adopt policies such as universal masking for students and teachers, three foot social distancing whenever possible, and continue cooperation with local health departments. Matt Kleindens, Big Fox, WYDC in Corning. Governor Cuomo announcing that $1.1 billion in grants will be directed to child care providers in New York. The money comes from the American Rescue Plan and represents the largest single investment in child care in state history. Grants will be managed through New York's Office of Children and Family Services. Funding applications open on August 4th. The Heather's Home 5K and Kids Fun Run is returning to Eldridge Park on August 7th. The annual race raises money for Heather's Home Ministries, which works to raise abandoned and orphaned children at homes in Ghana and Haiti. Registration for the event can be found on the Heather's Home Ministries website. The race starts at 8.30 in the morning. Two workers have been rescued after being trapped in a construction site collapse in Brooklyn. The ceiling of this five-story residential building, which was under construction, collapsed this afternoon. A second floor wall also collapsed. Rescue crews had to stabilize the building before they could reach the victims. Both workers were hospitalized. The coronavirus Delta variant is sweeping the country with deadly consequences. We've known for some time now that it is more serious than previous variants, but new information is coming out showing that it may be even worse than we thought, and getting vaccinated may be even more important than ever. Reed Binion reports. You don't screw around with this virus. This variant can kill you. Medical experts sounding the alarm amid news of an internal CDC document with troubling new details about just how dangerous the coronavirus Delta variant is. It's uh, much more contagious than the common cold. It's about as contagious as chickenpox, which is a, a very uh, contagious virus. Also, according to the document, Delta may be just as easy for vaccinated people to spread as unvaccinated people. Hence, the new guidance on masking up regardless of vaccination status. But for the unvaccinated, the consequences of catching it could be much worse than with previous variants. It's likely more severe or causes more severe disease than some of the earlier variants. Those developments coming as President Joe Biden issues a requirement for federal workers. They either get the vaccine or agree to regular coronavirus testing. The president also reaching across the aisle to praise Republican leaders promoting vaccination. I have to compliment Re Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He had made it political. He's encouraged people to get vaccinated. McConnell releasing a radio spot pushing vaccines. Every American should take advantage of this miracle and get vaccinated. It's the only way we're going to defeat COVID. I'm Reed Binion reporting. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is sharing why it updated its mask guidance. The agency says a new study was, quote, pivotal in its decision. As of Monday, health experts recommend most fully vaccinated Americans wear masks indoors, especially in areas where infection rates are high. Now, that pivotal study shows anyone with the COVID-19 Delta variant can transmit the virus no matter vaccination status. One CDC document says the Delta variant is about as transmissible as chickenpox, where an earlier COVID strain was compared to a common cold. 
Walmart is once again requiring employees to wear masks inside. The new policy is effective immediately in places with substantial or high transmission of COVID-19. Masks will still be optional for customers. Walmart ditched its mask mandate in May, but reevaluated the policy after the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention updated its guidance this week because of surging COVID-19 cases. The CDC now recommends fully vaccinated people resume wearing masks indoors in areas with high transmission of COVID-19 and its Delta variant, as mentioned. That includes nearly two-thirds of all U.S. counties. The corporate tide is shifting. Major companies were planning a return to work this fall, but with the contagious Delta variant causing a surge of COVID-19 cases, many are rethinking that strategy and if they'll require vaccines. Christine Romans has that story. I'm producing more work. I, I can be held accountable um, virtually. I don't actually need to be physically in the office. Some workers aren't ready yet to give up the flexibility and safety of working from home. But from the employer perspective, it's time. If you can go to a restaurant in New York City, you can come into the office. And we want you in the office. Offices for some Wall Street firms are already nearly full. Other industries preparing to return around Labor Day. At its core, we perform best when people are in person being human. This exclusive work from home period may be coming to an end, whether employees like it or not. Employers are saying the struggle with the narrative of this is good for me is that we pay you. So it has to be good for us. It must be mutually beneficial. This tricky re-entry made more difficult by employees questioning the safety of the workplace amid surging cases of the Delta variant in the U.S. We're creating this schism between, within the organization between vaccinated employees and unvaccinated employees. We've literally had reports of employees confronting unvaccinated employees and literally almost getting into physical fights. A June survey showing 63% of workers support vaccine mandates at work. Many employers are hearing from their workers, from their employees, that they want to know that people are vaccinated. New York City employers are growing more confident workers will be in the office come September, from 45% in March to 62% in May. Willingness to return to the office, though, is uneven. The young tech employees, it seems to be much tougher to get them back. The balancing act also important for small businesses. While there's concern about forcing people to come back or get vaccinated, there's also a lot of concern about the overall economy of the city. A big piece is the commuters working remotely, not patronizing the local stores. Child care is still a problem until it's clear that schools can reopen in person for good. Also a concern, the impact on careers of those who don't want to return to the office. Two, three, five years from now, when they're making promotional decisions, we promote people who we know and with whom we've built relationships. People living in Pennsylvania are cleaning up after two tornadoes hit one county Thursday night. Officials confirmed two twisters touched down in Bucks County. The storms damaged homes and businesses, snapped trees in half, and bent light poles. Four people were hurt, but their injuries are not serious. Officials expect to spend Friday assessing the destruction in the area. They don't know how many structures were damaged, but they say some will need to be rebuilt. The Red Cross has set up a shelter for people who need resources and information. We are seeing more video of a controversial arrest in Texas. Body camera video has been released showing what happened before a Kaufman County Sheriff's deputy pinned a teen to the ground. The teen's detainment has sparked a flood of complaints to the Sheriff's Office. Aaron Jones reports. There's a, um, there's a lady or a young lady. She has thrown herself out in front of the road. Looks like a possible suicide. The 911 calls started coming in. What's wrong? How come you crying? Deputy Marlin arrives, his body cam rolling. Just to talk to you and make sure you're okay. As they walk, he puts his hand on 18-year-old Nakaya Trigg's shoulder, then takes her arm. I don't want you to hurt me! He continues to try and calm her down and reassure her that he doesn't want to hurt her. Trigg gets very emotional. You're hurting me! You're hurting me! 
It appears Marlin's body camera falls off during the struggle and fails to capture the rest of the incident. This is about the time Trigg's family arrives and starts to record what's happening. The sheriff's office says Marlin is using a technique here on Trigg that they teach. It's a degrees out here. Okay. She cannot breathe. She's so up. Trigg is handcuffed and led to the car. The sheriff's office says in the street, her mother, Anthony Gray, eventually struck Marlin and was arrested on assault on a public servant and interference with public duties, as well as two outstanding warrants. She bonded out of jail yesterday. Trigg was taken to a mental health facility for evaluation. This is my daughter. How can you expect me to walk up and just look at this man straddled in a position that I've never seen a police on top of a man or a woman and my daughter is 18 years old. And outside the Kaufman County Jail tonight, Ray joined activists in calling for her charges to be dropped and for the resignation of Deputy Marlin. Still ahead tonight, military families face unique challenges each year when they're told to move to new bases. In Texas, we've lived in Germany, we've lived in Virginia, in Maryland, in Georgia, North Carolina, and now we're going to the West Coast. A look at how these changes come with unforeseen challenges for parents and also for their kids. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. This weather forecast is brought to you by William Matar. Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Monica McNeil, and we wound up with a really nice day as high pressure began to build in, and we're starting to, as a result of high pressure, the air is drying out, and we are in store for a really spectacular weekend. High temperatures uh, in our area were in the low 70s down toward uh, Williamsport, right around 83. So as the air continues to dry out, it really will allow for our temperatures to cool off considerably tonight. So our low temperatures are going to be a lot lower than normal for this time of the year. We're expecting clear skies tonight and we're dropped down to about 48 degrees here in Elmira. Over toward Hornell, about 48 and over toward Wellsboro, about 51 degrees. So it is going to be a very cool night compared to what we've had over the past couple of days, right? This weekend, high pressure builds in for Saturday. It's going to be dry and very comfortable out there. So any outdoor plans you may have will be great for Saturday. Always there's a but. Now that Saturday, all day Saturday looks amazing, but things are going to start to change as a storm system approaches for the second half of the weekend. So here's a look at your day on Saturday again, staying very dry. But as we take a look at Sunday afternoon, we've got a storm system to the north and west of us. This system will be tracking across the area. Therefore, we're seeing clouds on the increase and bringing in a chance for some pretty heavy rain moving into Elmira as we move through the day on Sunday. So the moisture returns and a chance for some heavy thunderstorms to develop throughout the day. Again, in the yellow and red, some of the heavier rainfall. The storm will stick with this for again for most of the evening and into the evening and nighttime hours and then it moves out. Then we're clear again and dry again as we head into Monday. All right, let's take a look at what you can expect over the next three days. Your forecast for Saturday, mostly sunny and very pleasant, right around 75. Overnight temperatures will be in the mid 50s and then on Sunday, there's a thunderstorm that I showed you of the cold front that will be moving through that's going to produce the thunderstorm activity. Once that system moves out, it's going to be pretty pleasant for us. You know, these temperatures are so welcome. Uh, expect a high on Monday right around 74 degrees, mid to upper 70s for most of the week. The air is relatively dry. Moisture returns by the end of the week, but the first half of your weekend is going to be nice. 
It's still unclear whether Olympic superstar Simone Biles will compete in Tokyo after she withdrew this week, citing mental health concerns. USA Gymnastics says Biles will continue to be evaluated to determine if she'll compete in next week's individual event finals. But her decision to withdraw has shined a spotlight on athletes and their mental health. In today's Health Minute, we explain why addressing those problems is so important. My first reaction was like profound sadness. When Simone Biles pulled out of Olympic competition, there were a lot of emotions, even from those watching. And then quickly, I just felt really proud. I certainly celebrate someone's ability to be vulnerable and to, to really stand up for what's best for them as a human. As a sports psychologist at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, Chelsea Day knows athletes experience mental health struggles at the same rate as everyone else. She says competing at any age in any sport can also add to the stresses and pressures of the spotlight. When we think about athletes who are really specializing in their sport and spending a lot of time training and competing, that's time taken away from maybe other things that you and I might do to take care of our mental health and well-being. That's why Day says it's important for athletes to be proactive in attending to their mental health needs so they can thrive. To do that, she says, athletes should have someone they trust to talk to. Journaling can also help them reflect and manage feelings, while grounding yourself in a single moment can stop thoughts from going wild. So can mindful breathing. What it allows us to do is pull into our body and out of our thoughts but it also helps to slow down that fight or flight response. With a focus now on Olympic athletes and their well-being, Day says everyone's mental health could benefit. The more we normalize them and their life and their stuff, the easier it is to accept that, you know, we've got it too, all of us. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. There's a sanitation worker in Minnesota who looks forward to seeing one face on his route every week. It belongs to a two-year-old boy who loves when the garbage truck comes. Jared Dean has the story of their special friendship. A young kid's joy is something to behold. Two-year-old Elliot Witte loves the garbage truck. And every Thursday, Elliot waits for his favorite driver, Jeff Weber, to come down his grandparents' street and say hello. Makes my day. You know, I, it, he, he does. He, he's, you know, when I come through the first time, he's standing out here waiting and waving. We give him a little toot of the horn. He knows I'm going to be back through. And just I just know, know it makes his day. And, Makes my day, too. Elliot brings Weber snacks and water every time he sees the truck. Then he gets ready to take up the bins from his grandparents' house as well as their neighbors. His grandparents say when 2 o'clock comes around, Elliot is ready. When he comes around the corner, he's coming, and out the door he goes, and he stands out here and will wait. So then he toots the horn at him, and he just loves that. Last week, Weber returned the gift-giving favors. He gave Elliot his own hat, adorned with the truck company's logo. We have a lot of ups and downs, and, you know, if I have a bad Thursday, I always know this little guy's going to turn it around for me when I get here. Weber is especially thankful for his Thursdays now. In December, Weber had to fight for his life with COVID. He says that he's grateful every day for the blessings of a second chance at life and Elliot. You know, I wonder why God saved me back in December. There's days like this to remind me of it. <laughs> all the love those little kids can give you and I mean he will he will come and he'll say I need a hug and that's you know that's some of the sweetest moments. Without knowing it Elliot has created some moments that Weber will remember forever. Elliot <laughs> you make my day little man you literally make my day I look forward to this all week long. Military families are on the move right now it's the time of year when service members have orders to report to a new duty station. And that means not just uprooting themselves, but their families. Brianna Keeler has more. In Texas, we've lived in Germany, we've lived in Virginia, in Maryland, in Georgia, North Carolina, and now we're going to the West Coast. It's moving season for the military, and Banna Miller, an Army spouse, is at it again with four kids in tow. So my husband and I have been married 16 years, and this is our 11th move. Each year, more than 400,000 service members receive orders to move, or as it's called in the military, PCS, a permanent change of station. Banner recounts the time every single bed was broken in a move. So we had nowhere to sleep. Even harder, getting kids settled in new schools and finding new friends. Finding a new doctor, dentist, hairdresser to you know, finding those people that you can call in the middle of the night if there's 
an emergency. Only 27% of active duty family members said they feel a sense of belonging to their local community, according to the most recent annual military family lifestyle survey conducted by Blue Star Families. But civilians in their communities can help by simply reaching out, inviting them to activities or offering to help in the case of a future emergency. Simple ways to say thank you for your service. I think if people could understand what it means to move 10, 12, 15 times over a 20 year career, I think there would be a lot more uh, compassion um, and, a, and a deeper, less superficial understanding of the word sacrifice. Brianna Keeler, Washington. The star of Black Widow is seeing red over the movie's release on the Disney Plus streaming service. Scarlett Johansson filed a lawsuit Thursday accusing Disney of breaching her contract by not releasing Black Widow exclusively to theaters. The 36-year-old actress argues that her salary is tied to the box office gross, which she says is diminished by the film also being available on Disney Plus at home. While ticket sales got off to a very good start, revenue has since fallen off, which the star's lawyers blame on it being available to screen at home. Representatives for Scarlett Johansson claim Disney is more focused on gaining subscribers to its streaming platform than maximizing box office gross. Some United Airlines passengers can now order food and snacks days before they board their flights. United Airlines has opened its new pre-order option to customers flying on select routes. The airline says they can order food, snacks and beverages up to five days before a flight using its website or mobile app. Customers who pre-order will have to use United's contactless payment system, which stores their credit card information on a digital wallet. Here's a road trip to remember. A family stopped on their way home from Texas to rescue a large alligator in the middle of a Louisiana interstate. Brittany Weiss has the story. It's that big toothy grin or maybe that long tail that Amanda Carter says was something to see. It was pretty remarkable. My kids are still talking about it and still telling jokes like why did the alligator cross the road? They found this guy in the middle of I-49 on their way back from Six Flags yesterday and nearly hit him. My husband thought that he saw a tire in the middle of the road and when we got closer he noticed it was a really large alligator. So he had to swerve to miss the alligator. When Carter, an animal lover, watched it get clipped by a passing car, she knew they had to help save the gator. So her husband turned around and pulled over. When he saw it and saw my face when it got hit by the car, he was like, oh gosh, here we go again. And he instantly was like, Amanda, we're not bringing this home. She was fine with that. After all, this guy wasn't exactly small. I would have to say he was probably about 10 to 12 foot. He was huge. Her husband, there in the blue shirt, tried to coax it off the road. And more people pulled over to help. The police were called to direct traffic. They tried to shield the alligator's eyes with a sheet, thinking they'd have a better shot at pulling him to safety that way. But no luck. Uh, didn't go too well. He was pretty stubborn. <laughs> they entertained him with turkey sandwiches, while Carter says they waited for a professional to get there. They came and they were able to get a lasso around his neck, and they were able to get him off the interstate, and he went on about his merry way. It's something Carter says she'll never forget, and is happy this gator is safe again. Well, we want to leave you with a smile tonight. A chubby panda cub weighing about eight ounces was born at Panda Center in China this week. It is believed to be the heaviest captive bred giant panda cub in the world. In March of this year, the mother panda successfully completed natural mating. In late June, she showed pregnancy signs of reducing food intake and increasing activity. On Monday night, she went into labor and finally gave birth to a female cub around noon on Tuesday in the center. The newborn cub and her mother are both in healthy condition, with the new mom taking good care of her baby, according to the center. From our whole team, thank you for joining us. We hope you have a great night and a nice weekend.